what's up guys welcome back to my channel it's i your girl helen helen karens yes welcome if you are new i'm glad you're here if you've been here and you've been keeping up with me thank you for coming back subscribe comment like share please do all those things i would like this channel to grow a little bit more this year and i need your help to do that so all right for those of you that have been hanging out with me for the past few months past few weeks past few years i don't know you will know that this channel is all about me <laughs> and how i live my life right so sometimes my videos are about finance i had the frugal mom series on wednesday nights a few years ago where i would track my debt and i did a debt tracker and all of that good stuff if you guys want to see more content like that again let me know in the comment section if you were here i would say four years ago when we started casa karen's the casa karen's playlist you noticed that i did a lot of diys because we bought a house first time homeowners and i did a lot of the projects myself to try to save a buck you know i just do different things whatever anything that has to do with me motherhood diy living my life hair whatever that's what this channel is about so if you are nosy and you want to see how i live my life come hang out with me if you are not nosy and you just like hanging out with me stay with me okay all right so what is today's video about it's about my recovery if you didn't know if this is your first video with me i just had a baby i'm 45 years old and i just had a baby yes about well i don't know seven weeks ago eight weeks i don't even know okay in january I had a baby in january and I kind of just want to talk to you about my C-section recovery because I have had all C-sections. I have three kids and all three were delivered via C-section. And before I had children, I had an abdominal surgery that put me into the C-section category. So I have had my belly cut open four times now in my life. And I kind of just wanted to recap the similarities, the differences, uh, what I feel has improved from six years ago, which was the last time that I had a C-section. I don't know, and I guess just my experience. So here we go. Okay, so first thing is first. When I had the C-section, I guess because this last baby was so big, she's an 11 pounder, they put this like tape on my belly. You kind of know those like stickies, that women will put on their boobs when they're wearing like a strapless dress or a dress that's like extremely like, you know, open and exposed, but they still need some coverage on the girls, right? So it's like a tape that they put on the nipple and then they kind of like lift it and it kind of just, right? So imagine that little thing for your, for your titty, right? But for my belly. So that was different. I didn't have that with Jack or Kennedy. When I came out of the surgery and I was you know, I guess day one, day two, they start giving you the meds. I noticed that they had not given me any type of narcotics. I was shocked. With Kennedy and with Jack, I got narcotics like day one. I had it throughout the recovery, at least for the first week or so. When I did my very, very first um, abdominal surgery in 2008, uh, again, I came home with narcotics because it, it was painful. Oh my God. So this time around, that was the first thing that I noticed that was very different. No narcotics. I only received a Percocet once and that's because I was in so much pain and I requested it. And so then the nurse had to call her boss. It's like a whole like new chain of command thing. So, but, and they approved it, but it was just one pill, one dose. And that was it. They sent me home on a regimen of a thousand milligrams of Tylenol, 600 milligrams of Motrin, and there was something else that I cannot remember the name of it, but long story short, it's the drug that literally suppresses your coughs, okay? So, but I had like Ricola, like a natural cough suppressant, so. But yes, those three medications, oh, plus a stool softener, because you know, things get a little get a little tight when you're trying to go to the bathroom and it hurts so so that's what i was on so that was the first thing that i noticed that was different in terms of week one i had a major panic attack when i came home and i just think it was 
there was just so much pent up fear and energy going into this c-section because i was already having so many issues before you know even giving birth like once we hit thanksgiving like baby was born in january once we were hitting around like november ish december ish man it was just painful uncomfortable and i was just just you know having issues my blood pressure was starting to go up so i was very very nervous and um coming home without your baby is tough <laughs> And so I think I kind of just like broke down. I my, my kids wanted to play with me. We were all in the bed and Kennedy was like, you know, dealing cards and we were gonna play, I think it was like phase 10 or something and Jack was on his computer. And I just felt like, like just something rising in me. And I was like, mommy, I, I can't play right now. And I had to get up and it was hard to get up because like, granted, you know, still recovering. But I, I rolled myself out of the bed, walked myself over to the bathroom and I had, the only panic attack. I did not have any panic attacks when I had Jack or Kennedy. So I don't know. It was just, it was very different, very scary, but we got through it. Now in terms of pain, okay, and going back to the whole like narcotic thing, when I had Jack, I don't know what it was that they gave me, but y'all, I felt like I was like the bionic woman because I literally left the hospital with something connected to me like a cable of sorts and i i don't know if it was like a type of time release narcotic or something but it was something i was literally like like i had a cable like that i could like press i don't know it was weird but it was medicine i thought i was gonna have that again no whatever so going back i'm like going back and forth whatever I I'm still have mommy brain. So week one, day two was horrible. I'll just keep it real. Week one was tough with the panic attack. Tough with when I came home, having to climb up the steps. Then when I left the hospital, I came home and then I had to go back, you know, to visit the baby. And then I had to go back to get the baby. That was a lot of going up and down the steps that I normally did not do when I had my previous two. So a little painful but then everything changed week two I still sore but I was okay and literally by week two I did not need the Tylenol anymore I took the Motrim on and off and if I did need Tylenol I would only take half of those because y'all that'd be messing with your liver and so I just thought that that was so weird that I was not in so much pain so I was grateful that I did not have to do the narcotics because that kind of messes with you and I don't want to get hooked on that kind of stuff. But um, it was cool, it was easier this time around. Plus the fact that my kids are older, my daughter's eight, my son is six. Even though they are pains in the butts because they're, they're kids, they were very helpful. They have been and they continue to be very helpful. My husband, he was not able to be home when I had my C-section with my daughter and my son. He had to work, right? So this time around, he took his six weeks and it was so nice to have my husband by my side for the first six weeks. It really did make a difference and oh, I'm so grateful. He has since gone back to work, but that's okay. I love him and I appreciate him. Uh, in terms of um, just how I feel, I don't feel depressed like I did after Jack. I felt depressed after Kennedy. I was like super depressed after Jack. This time I have my moments, you know, where I'm like, uh, I just want to be in bed all day. And then I have moments where I'm like, I want to go out, like, let's do this, right? So I am grateful that I do not feel like I am depressed and hopeless and whatever. I have moments where, yeah, well, you know, I'm tired and I'm a little sad here and there. But it's it just does not compare it does not compare to how i was in the past what else can i say my walking my walking i lord knows i don't know what is so different this time around but i felt that i i was so much more mobile this time around during week two you, when i had my son and my daughter I started feeling like like mobile and good mobile like end of week three 
going into like, you know, week four, that's when I started feeling like, okay, I can do this. Now nah, I had to remind myself during week two, I was like, oh, you're still recovering. Take it easy. Because I was up and down. I was walking. I was doing this. I was doing dishes. I was whatever. Granted, I would feel it at the end of the night. My back would hurt. But I guess what I'm saying is that the pain factor was very, very, very low this time around. Very, very low. And so far, it's been it's been good. The baby is sleeping right now. I'm actually looking at her. She say, like, while she sleeps, she's really really cute. But um, it has been it has been an experience. <laughs> Sometimes you know my husband and I we joke and like you know would you do it all over again? And it's not a one hundred percent yes. I would do it all over again. It's like. It's like a 90%. Like there's 10% of me that'd be like, nah, dog, <laughs> no thank you. But then, you know, after seeing my beautiful daughter, I'm like, oh my God, she's so sweet. <laughs> Can't imagine not having her in my life. So I am super grateful. Uh, I don't know what God has in store, what he has planned, but um, for some reason he gave her to us. So we're super grateful. The last thing that I, I'll share with you guys about my recovery <laughs> finances <laughs> y'all if you are planning to have a baby uh, you need to take this as like you're gonna buy a car you're gonna buy a house you know how you start saving up for your down payment <laughs> start saving okay for your maternity leave put money aside put money aside put money aside put money aside because even though i am like extremely vested in you know my pension and i have been working for almost 24 years now and you know i have I work for a company that has like 1250 employees i've worked more than a thousand hours like i i meet all the requirements y'all we are a month and a half with no pay no paycheck okay put in my disability claim apparently my employer is not a covered employer so now i'm being transferred to my disability via unemployment and that is a whole nightmare the moment you throw in unemployment that's just a whole other beast so i have no money um i have been selling my things on fa facebook marketplace <laughs> to make a buck <laughs> but you know i mean we're not like struggling struggling Thankfully, my husband is a saver and, you know, there's there's money on the side and he is still getting paid and he's covering the bills. Thank you, babe. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, save, save, save your money. When I had Kennedy, I had, I had like 45 sick days and because she was born in November, I was able to use my sick time and my personal time all the way up until, Lord knows, I don't even know like the late spring so that by the time i came back to work in like may or june then i was out again like like i had money when i had kennedy because of the way that the schedule was with jack it was a little tough because i had him in june and then the summer months and then you know i wasn't working wasn't getting paid in the summer and then i was off at the beginning of the school year went back in november for jack's pregnancy so that was a little tough but we were okay um with this one Financially, we're just in a much better position than we were years ago. However, my bad, my mistake. I did not save for maternity leave, but in my defense, I was not trying to get pregnant. <laughs> so, that out, okay? Right back at you. So yeah, save, save, save your money. Um, find yourself doctors and a team of doctors and nurses that uh, we'll listen to you and we'll care for you the way you deserve to be cared for. I had a very, very good team. And it's, again, it's the same team that I've had for my daughter, my son, and now this daughter. So that was a blessing. So there weren't too many things that were different from when I had my previous two C-sections to this one. A few little changes here and there, yes. But for the most part, the system pretty much feels like it's still the same. I will say that you could tell what's the word I'm looking for? The impact that COVID had on the process. Because when I had my daughter and my son, my parents were able to walk right into um, the pre, I want to say staging area 
<laughs> it's not a staging area, but it's the area where they set me up and then they my parents literally walked me into the OR, like to the door with my son and my daughter. This time around, they did not even let them onto the, the partum floor. Mm -mm. Not until the baby was out of me and I was in my room, they did not let them up to antepartum, postpartum, like recovery, none of those areas were they allowed to come into until I was settled in my actual hospital room. So that felt like a post COVID thing. But, but besides that, I am doing really, really well. I can't wait to push more content out to you guys. Please let me know down below. What do you want to see? Do you want to see hair content? Do you want to see more baby and me content? Do you want to see frugal living? Like how do I pay my bills? How do I save? How do I make money on Facebook Marketplace? Like, what do you want to see? And of course, it has to be stuff that pertains to my life because this channel is about my life. So just comment below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love. Thank you for supporting me on this surprise 45 and pregnant journey. And um, let's see what else life has in store. Peace out. See you next time. Mm -hmm.